been a while since I spoke in front of a group or a congregation, about six months. Um, it's definitely not my first time, but it's been a while. Yeah. Um, my name, by the way, is Wade, Brother Wade. You can call me um, just plain old Wade if you want to. <laughs> um, I know several people here tonight um, that are very dear to my heart who helped me on this Christian journey. Um, if it wouldn't be for some of those people, I really, you know, besides Jesus, I really wouldn't know where I'd be Amen. tonight. I'm going to take you back on the journey into time and to use a little street vernacular, um, this is a story of a real knucklehead. I mean, by the time I finish this story, you will know the definition of what a knucklehead is all about. I was raised as a Catholic. Um, went 11 years through CCD. If nobody knows what that is, it's just a school that you go after school, uh, type of religion and you get about an hour's worth of teaching. Um, I learned absolutely nothing but a few prayers. The Hail Mary, the Our Father, the Glory Be. Um, it wasn't until years later that I would come into contact with Jesus. I ran and ran and ran all my life. At a very young age, um, I began to use illegal drugs. I got addicted to marijuana, taking LSD at such a young age where my mind wasn't even fully developed, 14 years old. I destroyed my life with drugs and alcohol. And I'm here to tell you tonight, young people, if you're listening, that drugs and alcohol is a life of hell. Amen. A life of hell and misery that you don't want to go through. Amen. And I know the power of your peer and your friends, that pressure to, it looks so, it's so alluring to go out and do what they're doing, but it's just a trap. Yes. The Bible teaches us that Satan is cunning and crafty and he's subtle. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't come to us in a red suit with a pitchfork. That's right. He comes to us through all types of <clears throat> facets of life. It could be music. It could be your friend. It could be somebody that's very dear to you. It could be somebody that's in power. It could be even a so-called preacher mm -hmm. in a three-piece suit. Amen. So to know this word is one thing, but to apply it Amen. is something else. Amen. I knew this word backwards and forward, upside down. I knew the scriptures. I could quote the scriptures. But the application part of it, the wisdom of God, was, is a very hard task. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing. So retracting, going back a little bit in time, I had been in and out of jail several times. And people would come to me, you know, inmates, and try to preach to me. And I'm like, I don't want to hear that stuff. I'm not going to use the Bible as a crutch while I'm incarcerated. If I want to become a Christian, I will wait till I get out of prison or jail and I'll become a Christian. Mm -hmm. But not, not while I'm in prison, not while I'm in jail. I had a guy by the name of Bobby Yates who would come and say, hey man, let me just read this Bible to you. He begged me and begged me 
over and over and over again. And, he, and I finally gave in. And he would sit down on the side of my bunk and read this Bible. I never gave in. My heart was still hard. I was stubborn. In my mind, I knew what I was going to do. I was going to get back in the streets and do exactly what I was in there for. Mm. Now that's reprobate. Mm. That's sick. But that's the power of sin. That's right. That is the power and grip and bondage Amen. of sin. And I got out. And the very same day after this guy for six months tried to minister to me, I got out that very day and did exactly what I thought I was going to do. Got some alcohol, got some pain pills, and started abusing drugs. I owed some money because of some lawyer fees. And I borrowed that money and I had to pay it back. And I didn't know any other means but other to sell some drugs to, to pay that attorney fee. So within three days being out of jail, I set up a deal. And everything's going good, just the way I planned it. And all of a sudden I get pulled over by the cops coming down Interstate 10, coming from New Orleans, going to Baton Rouge. I had an open container, and how the state trooper didn't see it, I don't know. <clears throat> he could have arrested me and sent me right back to jail, right then and there, but I slid by. I get home that morning, and the deal wasn't complete. And that afternoon, that night, I started thinking about the stuff that was going on in my life. How I've been out for only three days and I've been pulled over by the police. I done tried to set up this drug deal to pay this attorney. And while I was thinking on those thoughts, laying in my bed, <coughs> As strange as this may sound, the air conditioning kicks on in its springtime, making a funny noise. Yump, 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 yump. I never heard the air conditioning make this type of noise. I get up, I look at the thermostat, the thermostat's on off. When that air was coming through that vent, I felt something. I felt something different. I go to my living room and I'm sitting on the couch and all of a sudden it was like electricity hit me. It dropped me down to my knees and on my hands. I begin to wail out, cry and repent to the Lord. It was so much of an impact that I was at my parents' house, <coughs> woke them up at 12 o'clock at night. Now I remember one scripture that that guy read to me. And he said, Jesus would be like lightning in the sky. And, I, and it was so, that presence was so strong, I thought Jesus Christ was coming back that very moment. I never felt anything of that magnitude. It was shocking. It was exuberant. It, there was, there's not enough adjectives that I can uh, describe that was happening to me at that particular moment. My father gets up and he's looking at me, strangely enough. And I'm trying to get up off my hands and knees. But the power of God had me locked down. And finally, after maybe 10 minutes, I don't know, I don't know the time frame. I get out, I, 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 I walk up into our, our living room, out of our living room, and I look out and look up into the sky, and I don't see the flash of lightning. 
so I know he wasn't returning. But the power of God is so real. I turned around, I looked at my father, and I said, I don't know what God wants me to do, but he wants me to do something, and you best believe that he's real. <clears throat> at that particular point, I, want, I was looking for a Bible. I didn't have a Bible. I wanted to put on a Christian program. It's like at that particular point in my life, I was looking through the lenses of Jesus. My father and them smoked at that time in the house, and I saw how disgusting cigarettes really is. Amen. And I, I was a smoker. Mm -hmm. I saw a can of beer that was on the counter, and I saw how utterly disgusting that was. I was a drinker. Mm -hmm. And for that, all that night, I probably didn't get a wink of sleep. But I knew I needed to get involved in the church. But I knew nothing about church. I knew nothing about the Word of God. I knew nothing about nothing at that particular time. So as the days go by, <coughs> that experience starts to wear off. <coughs> Even that, that God hit me so hard, it dropped me to my knees and on my hands and crying out. And even speaking in another language, all in one instance. As mightily as that was, it still would not stop me from going back and doing what I've always done. Think about it. The power of sin. But greater is he Amen. that lives in me Amen. than he Amen. that lives in the world. Because ultimately, God is faithful. And he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. No many, it don't matter how many times you may run into that brick wall. If you will step up to the plate, God will throw you another ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when you stop stepping up to that plate, right. then there's no more chance. Amen. Because God can't, who is he going to throw to? Right. But if you step up, guess what? That ball's coming down the pipe. So, 45 days. This is the first time I ever heard God's audible voice, and probably the only time. 45 days after that experience, I'm going, I don't know what to do at this particular time. I don't have any money, so I'm back at it again. I'm going to make a hustle. I'm on my way going to this guy's house to pick up some drugs. The first time I heard no was in my head. And I go, um, what was that? I'm by myself. And I heard no, don't go. And I, I did like this. I kid you not. I shook my head. And then I went a little bit further. And I heard it again in my head. And I did like that. Tried to shake it off. And then I heard again. Do not go. And I go. Ugh. That's deranged. That's a lunatic. <laughs> and I went. Within two days, I was arrested. I was arrested, and that's when I got down on my knees and said, Lord, do whatever you want to do with me. I surrender. I surrender all. On that journey is when I was able to, I mean, I dedicated my life completely, 100% to God. I got in this word so deep. That's all I did. I, I, I lived it, I, I, I read it, I dreamed it, I believed it. Anything that had to do with the Bible and the Lord, I was in. However, after about two and a half years into a prison sentence, I run into one of my best friends in the whole world, mm -hmm. Robert yeah. Fernandez. Mm -hmm. Such a strong pillar in my life. Amen. 
Someone had never judged me, never turned his back on me, and has always been there. Amen. And I'm proud to say that he's one of my best friends. Yes. Amen. And a great man of God. Amen. Amen. Um, when I get out of prison, I'm used of the Lord. I've seen many people say, baptized and filled with the Spirit. Um, even coming down to Morgan City from time to time and do Bible study with Brother Matt and Robert and Sabrina. Um, holy revivals at different locations. And God blessed me. When my children were little, I got full custody of them. Uh, within two years of being out of prison, the Lord blessed me with a brand new house, brand new car. A good job. On my third year being out of prison, I was able to open up my own dealership. Amen. That's what the Lord done for me. Yes. But I was faithful to his word and his work. And then here comes Satan. Mm -hmm. He's, he never stopped trying to get in. He never stopped trying to steal, kill, and destroy everything that God has given me. And that dealership took up so much of my time. It started pulling me away from preaching. It started pulling me away from doing Bible studies. It started pulling me away from, instead of going to church two and three times a week, only going one time a week. Because I was so busy, that was my excuse. I hired the wrong people. <clears throat> You know, at first I hired the right people. Then the wrong people came. And before I knew it, I was taking deals that I never dreamed I would ever do. I was doing things that years ago you could have never, I would have never fathomed that I would do. But that's how cunning and crafty yeah. Satan is. And he uses friends. He uses people of leadership. He uses anybody that's a willing vessel. Amen. Just like God will Amen. use anybody who's a willing vessel. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you where it started. Hey, here's a half of a Adderall mm. prescription. Mm. Prescription pill. It's got, a, it's got your name on it. Yeah. Just take a little piece of it. All it's going to do is keep you alert. Keep you, you're about to do the books in no time. You're about to go home and get that rest. That you're, You'll get that time that you want to spend with your kids. Just take a little quarter of a little piece. Next thing you know, a piece begins into a whole pill. A whole pill turns into a prescription. A prescription turns into illegal yeah. activity. Mm -hmm. Illegal activity produces... Either one or two things, prison mm. or the grave. I was lucky enough that Lord blessed me, Amen. blessed me with prison. That's a blessing. Amen. That's right. Because That's right. it enabled me to get back to my roots. Amen. It gave me the time to reflect and see what the Lord has done for me. And where he's brought me. I know like Paul says. I know what it is to abound. And I know what it is to be a base. I know what it is to have a lot. And I know what it is to have a little. Amen. And when I say a little. I mean little. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Very little. <laughs> because prison's not fun. Mm. And that's. That lifestyle. Eventually that's. That's where you go. Yeah. There's no other option besides the grave. That's right. So, for the last four years, I rededicated. The Lord used me while I was in prison. I've seen people saved and filled and uh, preached to the masses. And here I am again standing before you guys today 
trying to give you a, a hope because not everybody, nobody can probably really too much relate with that message, but with that testimony, but everybody has been through the up and the down. Amen. It's just in a different scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Satan will bring this condemnation on you and say that you're not worthy, that he wants to put that guilt on you. But Romans 8 and 1 says, Therefore now there's no condemnation to those who walk, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm. When you're walking, you want to know, you know when you're walking in the, in the flesh? When you feel condemnation. Mm. When you feel that condemnation, that's what the Bible says. That, that's how you know that you're not in the spirit anymore. You stepped outside of that parameter. And now you're walking in the flesh. And there's no peace. And there's no peace. I know what it is to walk in the flesh. Yeah. I know what it is to walk in the spirit. And it's much better Amen. to walk in the spirit. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. The flesh desires so many things in life. What the eyes can see, what it can taste, <coughs> touch, taste, smell. You ever fasted before? Yes. And that food smelled so good. So good. It seems like every time I would fast and, and I'm, I'm at work, they ordered pizza or they ordered this or they ordered that. And I'm like, oh God, why are they doing that today? And that's how sin is. That's how sin, that's how alluring is so good. Only if I could just get a, a slice of that pizza when you're fasting. <laughs> My life has been a roller coaster ride. And I think everybody here tonight can say, in some shape, fashion, or form, it's an up and down battle. There's a war that's constantly going on inside of this. This temple is the war of the, the, the flesh and the spirit. Okay. And these two are <coughs> at, they have enmity between one another. It's a constant battle. That's right. It's a constant <coughs> battle that goes on in our lives. But we have to find the wisdom how to apply God's provision. His salvation plan for our lives. Until we understand how that all works, then you'll be just like me. You'll go through life and when you don't know how to apply it, you'll fall. Yes. The Bible says we all fall short of God's glory. That's going to happen. You can't stop it. Falling short. Amen. But... A righteous man falls seven times. God's perfect number. Seven times, but what? He gets back up. Amen. And this, you know, <clears throat> there's a little shame and guilt with falling and, and living outside of the will of God. That's right. But if you let that guilt and that shame consume you, then you'll never, you'll never stand up. Amen. You'll just waddle in it. That's right. That's good. But I, I bring a message of hope to you tonight. I'm a living testimony of God's grace. Amen. He's taking me a mighty, 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 mighty long way. Amen. And if you're going through something tonight, He can take you out. Oh, yeah. I'm a living witness. I've been through the battle. I got a lot of scars. <laughs> Believe me. I got battle wounds all over me. But you know what? Those battle wounds are self-inflicted. Mostly. Yeah. I'm like throwing myself right in front. Hey, here's another bullet. Let me get in front of it. <laughs> Let me take this yeah. one. Let me take that one. I did it to myself. We don't have to live like that. But we definitely have to be in prayer. We have to 
not only know this word, but apply it. Amen. Because knowledge is only half the battle. That's right. That's our old saying. It's only half. The other half is the application. And that's the wisdom of God. If you read the book of Proverbs, everything that God has done in his creative power is through his wisdom. He did it by his wisdom, not by his knowledge or his understanding, but his creative power is his wisdom because it's the application of what he already knows and understands. And if we're made in the image of God, then it's the same way. Not that we can create anything, but when we live that I know certain things, I understand certain things, but the only way that I'm going to carry it out is through the wisdom of knowledge and understanding. So I just want to leave that with you guys tonight. And I pray that my testimony will encourage somebody that it's not over until it's over. That's right. Amen. That's good. Not until that trumpet sounds. Amen. That's right. It's not over until it's over. That's right. Amen. Because if it was, I wouldn't be here. So let's just, everybody bow your heads tonight.